So project crashing, saving time on the project. Uh, I did a separate lecture for this um, in total where I recapped all of the project management planning tools to do the network analysis, the critical path analysis, the forwards pass and the backwards pass. So if you need to review how you do network analysis, now's the time to pause this video and go and find the relevant lecture. When we find that there isn't enough time to finish the project, we need to crash the project. And for this video clip, for this lecture, what I thought I'd do, I'd look at three textbooks to see what they do about project crashing. The first book we'll look at is by Richard Newton. And these are the suggestions to crash the project. Newton suggests that there's always pressure to deliver the project faster or to reduce costs. And therefore, crashing is a, an important part of project management. In order to crash the project, get your management focused on what's required. Let them be aware of the problem and they can help you make decisions about what is important, about what you can do and what you can't do. Quick decision making is essential. Having determined there isn't enough time to do the project and you want to speed up the project, then you can't wait a few weeks for a meeting to decide what you're going to do. Uh, use resource pools or look at um, pooling up your resources such that you can move your resources easily to the tasks that need to be reduced in duration. Try and remove the constraints. You may find you're constrained by particular pieces of equipment or particular resources or the sequence of, of tasks. Try and remove these constraints so you can move things around. Your plan becomes more flexible. Reduce the scope of your project. Uh, I would always suggest this would be the last thing that you would do because you're not delivering the functionality. But by deleting tasks, you are actually going to be able to do more in a given time. And phasing projects, which means overlapping whole projects with each other. Time boxing is very similar to the technique that we looked at in agile project management where instead of saying how long will it take you to do it, you're saying what can you achieve by Friday? Uh, it puts a focus on delivery of tasks. Working on the tasks in parallel, concurrent working of individual tasks. Um, overlapping the tasks using lead time would partly get you the same benefit. Concurrent engineering of whole phases of the project. So in a multidisciplined environment, you're asking your manufacturing people to start work before your production people have actually finished the planning or your design people have actually delivered the product that's going to be built. Change the project strategy. Uh, review the plan. Gardner uh, also has a view on project crashing. And Gardner suggests that, uh, first of all, you might look at adding resources to the critical activities. Now, I suggested that there are different types of activities, and uh, there are effort-driven activities and fixed-duration activities. Remember that adding resources to effort-driven duration activities will reduce their duration, but adding resources to fixed-duration activities is going to have no effect. A lecture takes 50 minutes. Put two lecturers in there, the lecture still takes 50 minutes. Gardner suggests that actually this might decrease productivity. If you put two people on the task, they've got to communicate with each other. It could actually increase more work uh, for the task. An example I often use is you've got 20 hours to deliver a piece of software. There's 20 hours of effort. And somebody says, this is going to take me three or four days to complete this 20 hours of effort. Three or four days, the task is on the critical path. We need to speed it up. Let's put two people on the job. Well, now those two people have to communicate with each other. There's now 40 hours work. Yes, there's a chance that we might finish it in three days, but there is more work and more cost associated with the task. Crashing adds costs, Gardner points out, working overtime to get more work done in any given day. It can lead to less productivity. Uh, another example I often use is we're painting a room. You put two painters in there, then the duration should be half. 
you put three painters in there, and the third painter is going to make the tea for the other two to keep them happy. You're not going to make any more savings. It's less productive. So we need to balance the cost of our crashing method against the time that we've saved. Gardner then says, reevaluate your network. Check the dependencies. Challenge the estimates for the tasks. Add lead time. Remove the lag time. Overlapping project phases. Again, this is similar to what Newton suggests. Let's get the manufacturing people starting work before the design is completed. And finally, Gardner suggests rescoping the project. And of course, what he means is descoping the project, removing the functionality. Um, increased procurement, uh, buying more things, using more contractors, hiring specialist equipment, hiring third-party specialists is going to be a way of outsourcing work, which might mean that it can be done quicker. Um, rethinking the work, doing the same task in a new way that takes less time. This is working smarter, not harder. And maybe as the last option, renegotiating the end date for the project if you really can't meet it. Of course, if this is a time-critical project, that is a real no-no. But if the project is cost or quality critical, then maybe this is acceptable. Finally, we'll look at uh, Dennis Locke's book to see what he suggests about project crashing. And the suggestion is, is that the first thing we'll do is uh, look at the network and try and revise the estimates. Remember, our network analysis was based on the estimates of durations for the individual tasks. These are only estimates. When somebody says, I think it will be 10 days duration, it's an estimate. Uh, and when you go back to them and say, you're on the critical path, they might say, yeah, I can achieve that in eight days in that case. What Locke doesn't say is challenge the dependencies. If you can improve the dependencies by adding more concurrent tasks, by adding lead time, you're going to improve the overall project time. Then Locke suggests hiring extra labor. Um, he then points out that it can be efficient and that doubling the workforce does not mean we half the duration. Again, in my example, we're painting a room. Uh, we've got 20 hours of work. If we put two people on the task, how many hours of work? It's still 20 hours of work, but the duration might come down. We put a third person on the task, and the duration may reduce again. We put a fourth person on the task, and maybe we don't have enough paint brushes or ladders, so the duration will not reduce. Hiring specialist equipment, um, so Locke is agreeing with Gardner's view there. Working overtime to get more hours within a given duration, and the point is that this costs money and it can stress the staff. Re-examine the network each time you make a change to see if the critical path has changed. Locke suggests working all night, but that will have costs of flood lighting, supervision, and other overheads. So re-examine the network, has it changed? If it, if it has, this is good news because you've got new items on your critical path to look at and crash to try and save some time. And then recalculate the critical path and keep going. Now, Locke says don't crash a non-critical item. It doesn't give you any benefit. Uh, what I suggest is that we optimize the whole plan such that if we do change the critical path, we're already working now on a new optimized critical path. So in summary, project crashing, in summary, check that you've got the correct durations and dependencies in your network analysis. The durations are just estimates. Uh, when people's priorities change, their durations change. Check you've got the best dependencies. If our dependencies are incorrect, then the total time for the project that we've calculated will be incorrect. Understand, is the project time critical, cost critical, or quality critical? Now, still optimize the plan. If the project is cost critical, we still want to optimize the plan. The project is time critical and you're already finishing early, still optimize the plan. 
Uh, if the project is time critical, there could be a bonus for finishing early. If you finish early, still optimize the plan. You want to be working to the best plan that there is. To reduce the duration of tasks, you're going to need to add resources. You add resources to the critical path items, but we do want to optimize the non-critical path items in case they become critical. Look at the biggest duration tasks first, because if we can halve a 10-day duration, we immediately save five days. If you only look at the small durations, a two-day duration, if we half it, we've only saved one day. Look at the effort-driven tasks. There is no point in adding resource to a fixed duration tasks. Be aware which tasks are constrained by fixed dates, because if you speed up the tasks in front of them, you then need to change that fixed date. That could be uh, order a skip to arrive on a certain date earlier, or book a, a flight to go out to a supplier meeting at an earlier time. When you're optimizing the plan, look at your different resources and try and optimize the cheapest resource first because adding resources could well add cost to the project. So look at the cheap resource, effort-driven, critical path items. And when you change the critical path, recalculate it to see where the new critical path is to understand how much that cost and how much time you have saved. So where are we going to get these resources from? We could get them from other projects. It's pretty demotivating, though, for the boss to come to you and say your project is cancelled because we need you to work on another project. Uh, the boss is saying your project is not as important as this other project. It's also demotivating for the staff on the other project because they are accepting the fact that they couldn't do it on time themselves and they need help from somebody else and people often don't like admitting that they need help. We could retrain existing staff to work on tasks that perhaps they're less familiar with. Uh, there's a risk involved here and there's a cost involved here because even though we retrain them, it might take them more hours to complete the task. Using contractors uh, can be an easy way of finding resource for some task types. Uh, contractors often charge a premium rate because of the unpredictable nature of their employment. We could recruit new staff. Um, it's gonna take three months to six months. Depends what skill type you need to recruit, but this uh, perhaps isn't an option on short projects. Okay, so the project doesn't finish on time. We can't deliver this project to meet a particular date that the company require. Let's go and buy a competitor. Maybe they already have that product. Uh, buying a competitor, cancelling their projects, moving their staff to us, it's an option that's available to us. Let's employ some consultants to look at our project plan, to look at the way we're working, to try and sort out how we can save some time in the project. Outsourcing the whole project. Uh, some very famous vehicle manufacturing design projects that uh, I knew about in the late 1990s, uh, a Range Rover redesign, was actually created not by Rover engineers, not by BMW engineers. Most of the design work was done by an external design contract house. Then we need to look at adding lead time. Onto the critical path should have an immediate benefit or removing lag time, obviously from the critical path first, but, but let's optimize the whole plan. And every time we make a change, has the critical path changed? Recalculate the critical path. So we're working on a time critical project, we've crashed it, we've just squeezed it in, we can't afford to lose any time, we need to motivate the staff to keep their concentration on working and delivering their tasks to plan. We need to increase the communication. Um, increasing the communication will help the motivation or keep people informed about when they need to start their work because the people before are nearly finished. We need to monitor and control the project a lot closer. We can't afford any slippages. So we've got to monitor things far more closely. 
Uh, and maybe the risks are changing. We're cutting corners. Maybe we need to re-examine the risks. Have we actually introduced some risks now that we have used different resources or used contractors or we're trying to do things in a smart and clever way? And while we're concentrating on reducing time in the project, are our costs going out of control? Are we still within budget? Has this project now suddenly stopped being time critical and has become cost critical because we've taken our eyes off the budget while we try to reduce the project duration? And finally, to save time on the project, remove tasks. It's got an immediate gain if you take a task away from the critical path. Uh, however, you're now not delivering the functionality of the project you're not delivering the objectives as you originally planned. So somebody's going to have to authorize that decision to de-scope the project, to remove that functionality in order to save time. And that's the project uh, crashing. First of all, you need to do the network analysis, and then you can use these techniques to try and save time on the project. We want to be working on an optimized plan and then if things slip, if things go wrong, then perhaps it's not important that we're losing some time on the project. 